John Kutchko again with Hall of Famer Jim Kelly, and I still get goosebumps just watching, thinking about the end of that game, Jim. I mean, I've never seen a scene like that before. Uh, watching it at home, people were euphoric. Watching it in the stadium, people couldn't believe the success you had against yeah. that team at that particular moment, and you're going to the Super Bowl. Um, I want to take you back to the closing minutes. Because really, you had the game won by halftime. We all know that. You have to say you got to play it like it's the second yeah. game. But you had it won at halftime. What was it like for you seeing all 80,000 fans just going crazy, really, that entire fourth quarter? At one moment, you're taking footballs off the bench, throwing them up into the <laughs> stands to give the, uh, a few lucky fans an added souvenir and a great moment there. But it was unparalleled, really, in team history to that particular moment. It was awesome because, number one, you before I got to Buffalo, you hear all the bad things. Mm -hmm. And until you come and really experience the way the fans are, the people, you know, outside of football, how exciting it is and how great these people are. And then to be able to put the excitement back into Buffalo and try to win something for them. Um, it was just amazing. I remember Leon Seals and Bruce and everybody, Daryl Talley up dancing on the, the, the benches yep. and how excited that was and me throwing the footballs up in the stands. And it just, she puts a smile on my face. And these are some <laughs> of the things that I love to think about. But even to this day, I still have not watched any of the Super Bowls. Right. Um, I just never want that in my heart to stay there longer than I want it to be. But I remember the good games. I remember us, um, you know, going there and how excited uh, the fans were to be there, how excited my family was. Um, and it was a, a moment in my history of my playing that will probably be one of the best ones ever. You brought up the fact that, you know, when you, when you got to Western New York, you know, you had gone to the Houston Gamblers first yeah. for the USFL. You had ended up with the New Jersey Generals working for a guy named Trump. And now you're finally with the Bills, and you got the fanfare welcome on the small private plane when you landed, and it was uh, the rest was history. But at some point, you made a decision to call this area home, you know, and and that was not the Jim Kelly I remember coming out of the University of Miami. No, it it, it changed, but you you learn to love the people, you and you get to know more people. Even today, this is 2019 going on 2020, and uh, when I think about where I could have went, where I wanted to go. You can't take the people with you. You can't take the Buffalo Bills with you. You can't take your friends. And I've got a lot of friends that right here in Western New York, and I can never do that. I mean, I, I mean even in Rochester, I have so many people that um, go out of their way to, to be nice, go out of their way to support the foundation, to them, whether it's Kelly for Kids mm -hmm. or, or Hunter's Hope or the things I'm doing. My football camp, it's going on, I think, 33 years now. Amazing. But the thing is, you just have to reflect back on the people, reflect on my life, what I've been through, what we have been through, whether it's you know the football team or whether it's me personally with my family. Um, but it all comes down to putting a smile back on my face, knowing that... Uh, I've been blessed to do what I have. I've been doing for my 30-some you know, years I've been here. But now I'm still here and I'm still enjoying myself. You know, you gave the fans a gift, and it's something they cherished till their last days. And these fans came back for you when, when you needed the support on several fronts. You talk about Hunter's Hope. Yep. Uh, let's talk about that first. Uh, how's everything going with the foundation? You've done a lot of good. You took a, an absolute tragic gut-wrenching experience in your life, your family's life, Jill's life, and you, you turned it into something pretty special here, and you keep mm -hmm. that legacy going. Well, it's either do that or crawl in your little shell and feel sorry for yourself. And um, my family and I, we decided that we're gonna, we're gonna fight this, we're gonna make a difference for other kids. And I, and I said this before, um, I remember after the Pro Football Hall of Fame saying my, my son never Ran out on the football field and heard those 80,000 crazy wild Buffalo Bill fans, but he's already done more in his life and he never spoke a word. He's already saved tens of thousands of kids across this country. And we're not going to stop until every state tests for the maximum amount of treatable diseases. And right now, um, there's a lot of states that we're, we're, we're pushing on. Hopefully, each and every year we get a couple more. but. Man, it's got to change. They, they need to make sure that every state in this country tests for the same amount of disease that your neighboring state does. They don't do that. And when you see and hear thousands of babies die every year because they're born in the wrong state that didn't test for that particular disease, 
you know something's got to be done and I'm not going to stop neither is my wife mm -hmm. uh, until something changes your best moment in the stadium as great as all those wins were the ones that got you in the Super Bowl I have to believe wheeling your son out there when your yeah. number was retired and you kissing Hunter on the head uh, it's got to be at the top of that list. It was something any Bills yeah. fan, any sports fan, not even any sports fan, anybody seeing that would never forget. Well, the Pro Football Hall of Fame was probably because you look at your whole career, you look at that. But having Hunter there when I my, me and my wheeled him out on, on his, in his wheelchair wearing his number 12, and my daughter Cameron there and wearing theirs, and of course Mama doing the same thing, and that big number 12 sliding <laughs> down over the fans. Uh, yeah, that's one of the best moments of my whole life um, because I was able to be there, but more importantly uh, for that is my son was there that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can tell, it always puts a smile on my face. And I and I don't know whether people know this or not, but I talk to my son pretty much every day. I know he hears me, and I keep telling him that uh, one day I will see him. I'm not ready yet, but one day I will see my son in heaven, and um, I can't wait for that day. You feel his presence in your life every day, obviously, and you've been through a lot since Hunter's passing, and you've overcome it brilliantly. We were just talking off camera. Uh, it was a year ago when you were having yet more surgeries and recovering, but you look great. How do you feel right now? How's everything going um, for you I'm right now? I'm, I'm getting better. Um, of course, I don't think I'll ever get back to where I once was, uh, but you know what? It is what it is, and as I travel and I see people and talk to people, I know that uh, my, my, you know, all the stuff I've been through doesn't compare to some of the other people that I talk to or other people I talk to about their family members. And I just know that God has a plan for me and has to be able to make a difference out there. And that's what I travel around the country doing. And I speak to a number of organizations, churches, a little bit of everything. But the thing is, um, yeah, there's times where I look back and wonder why I've been through all this stuff. And but I do understand that the good Lord has a plan for me and has to be able to go out there and hopefully uh, change other people's mindset to, to make sure they don't give up, make sure they don't give up on their family members or their friends to help them get through those tough times. They all go through tough times, but it's your attitude that you have and surround yourself with good quality people. And I've been very blessed to have a lot of people right here in Western New York, whether it's Rochester or, or you know, even way up in Watertown or <laughs> right here. Um, you just do what you have to do. It's part of life, and it's what I've been dealt, and it is what it is. You never once lost faith. A lot of people may question things at a moment when they're down like that. They're going through such physical pain. You never once lost faith. How much did Hunter have to do with that, do you think? There's times where I question my faith. There's no doubt. Um, but I know that God has a big plan in this. I get it. And I, I know my son is right there beside me. And, I, I watch what my son went through every day of his life, and it was not nice. It wasn't pretty at all. And But if he could go through that in the last eight and a half years, God knows I can do it. And uh, uh, when I talk about, you know, they talk about the Kelly Tough, uh, there's no doubt that he started. Even though I look back to my mom and dad and how they brought us up and how my mother fought emphysema for so many years and how she battled every day of her life to get every breath, She's probably the one that taught us more about toughness than my father or my brothers or anything because she went through it all. And then, of course, when Hunter was born, mm -hmm. um, I know Grandma was right there with him saying, you can do it, Hunter, you can do it. And uh, But now I know he's saying, you can do it, Daddy, you can do it. And so I just live each and every day to the fullest. And I know that's an old cliche, but that's the way I live. And I've been very blessed to have good quality people around me. And more importantly, I have great great family members. Mm -hmm. My wife, my two daughters, my five brothers, oh my Lord, I could not ask for better family members. Lastly, uh, Christmas, New Year's, you go back to when you were in a hospital bed in New York and you were going through the worst of the worst. Uh, how much does this mean to you uh, to be here, to be home amongst family at Christmas and look ahead to the new year knowing, man, you made a recovery and you're here and that's that's a big victory. My first couple um, big surgery, my first two bouts of cancer after that second one I wasn't sure um, but I again I had the people around me I had my wife uh, I had my two daughters my brothers that I talked about but I just remember when I was going through tough tough times uh, they were always there to help me get through it and I've said this in so many interviews about my my wife my two daughters how 
they would never walk into my room with a frown. It was always an attitude that uh, they're going to make my day better by what they said in their presence in my hospital room. And my brothers, you know, get up, you'll be all right. Come on, we're going for a walk. I'm like, man, I don't feel like, well, get up. That's just the way my brothers have always been. But just to look back on it, and then all of a sudden, cancer came back for a third time. And I'm like, really? <laughs> it almost to a point where I laughed because I was like, three times, okay, once, twice as bad, three times, really? But you know what? It is what it is. And you got to keep, uh, keep going and, and just pray for the best. Jim Kelly, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you God very much. Merry Christmas to you and your family.